detail there. This is Bob Bond. He is the director of a Tswana University of Technology project called Retexa, a resource-driven technology concept center where senior students get a chance to work on projects alongside industry professionals. We're unashamedly a concept center. We don't talk a lot, we tend to do things. And in a very short space of time, you know, we like to demonstrate concepts, which we believe are revolutionary. It may sound borderline leftist, but these guys are using technology to help people of South Africa and maybe even the rest of the world. Look, within Retexa we always talk about baby steps. It would be lovely to have developed a flying car, but clearly that's not feasible. It would be nice to develop a taxi. It's also not feasible at this stage. Electric car, while well, others have done that, the Jewel for example. So we thought, you know, let's keep our feet on, on, on the ground and come up with something that is, could be utilised in the village context. And all of us are familiar with bicycles. So what we did was we saw um, transport to market, people carrying stuff on their head. And we thought we'd come up with a new concept, you know, around a three-wheeler that's hydrogen powered and really gets the villager access to the market. The last six months have been a quest to beat not only the clock, but also budgets. Bob has been raising funds and awareness about the hydrogen tricycle project. The Department of Science and Technology shared their vision and together with Hydrogen South Africa co-funded the Ahi Fambeni Hydrogen Tricycle, a vendor phrase meaning let's go. Under the mentorship of industry professionals such as world-renowned designer Pieter Blanche, the man behind the design of the world-famous Ducati motorcycles, students like Johannes Mashabella, a master's student in mechanical engineering at TUT, get the opportunity to learn the tricks of the trade from those in the know. They were capacitated on the project under the mentorship of the project manager Tony Wynn. So each one's a specialist in his own area. If you look at Eric, well Eric worked with us around um, the storage tank. Johannes looked at the whole structure for the bike. Eric, and Eric was quite amazing in what he did because he came up with the first design before we involved Pierre. And he's seen it evolve to something that's uh, internationally competitive. The Ahi Fambeni is that competitiveness on three wheels. It uses hydrogen to help Tony Wine, project manager, as he paddles. It can carry a load bay of 100 kilograms and Retexa sees this as a way for small producers to take vegetables to the market. But how does it work? To start the fuel cell, you first turn on the master switch. You then turn on the stack. You then apply hydrogen through a regulator to the fuel cell that's mounted under the body. Some of the work was done by Walter Selawane, a B-Tech student who believes that science makes the world go round. Walter has fond memories of his mentors. For me it was really you know, nice working with them because I've been exposed to so many things that I didn't know before. So it was really you know, a lovely, lovely six months. Walter had to learn to work with new software and that caused him some sleepless nights. My contribution on Knife and Bane was to do the reverse engineering of the module you know, that is on the bike. So basically what the reverse engineering is, is that you take the original module into a soft package or a soft data so that you can work it. If you want to make some changes, you can deal with it on the software. Johannes Mashabella, a man who loves a challenge, he worked on the hydrogen storage system in the tank. One of the marvels of the Ahi Fambeni is its ability to move heat in and out of the tank. We pour a, a, a metal hydride powder in the tank and then that powder is the one which absorbs hydrogen and releases it when it's needed. And then we apply a, a heat to release hydrogen in the tank. These are some valves, so when we open these valves, the, the hydrogen is going to travel from the tank to the fuel cell. And then in the fuel cell is where we produce electricity. And that electricity is the one which is driving the motor and the motor is driving the wheels. This is only prototype zero and Bob thinks they might need two more before it's ready for the mass market. Look, when we launched it at Kwa Maritani, I was quite amazed by the minister of, of DST, Naledi Pando. And unfortunately, she had a dress on on the day. I think had she come in slacks, she would have climbed and ridden this bike around Kwa Maritani. I could really see, I mean, she almost had a leg over the bike itself. And I think she was quite excited, you know, to interface with the students and understand their role in this project. But I think she also subscribes to our vision that we can do something quite nifty in the rural areas, utilising technology. Depending on funding secured for Prototype Zero, the team hopes to shed more weight from the tricycle and Bob says they are aiming for as much as an 80% reduction. 
It's designed as 200 kilograms. So the rider, you know, depending on how much you eat, up to 100 kilograms and the balance for the weight in the back. So, you know, we're quite confident that one could put 100 kilograms of produce on the back of the bike and get it to market and at operating speeds of about 25 kilos per hour with a duration of between three and four hours. The Ahi Fambeni is a small victory for the university, but someday it may be an even bigger victory for Africa and its students. Thank <music> you.